Good morning, biology students. I'm gonna to talk to you about cell division and reproduction. You guys need to write down notes during this, so make sure you have a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. Um, a lot of people haven't really been taking good notes, which I mean, honestly, you're online. I can't give you very many directions on how to do it. So I understand a little bit and I've given people like a free pass up until now, but we need to start taking better notes because notes are there to help you in your future lessons. They're there as a reference for you. They're there to help you on your tests because since all of this stuff is online, you can use your notes when you're taking your test. And so you want to make sure you're writing down things that are actually going to be helpful to you. And so I've kind of determined, because I'm the teacher and I've taught biology for, I think this is my eighth year doing it, that I know what students need to write down to remember. So I'm going to kind of tell you. But if there's something else you want to write down, you are welcome to. And um, when we're looking at a slide, so like I'm just going to go to the next slide, for example, um, if you write down living things dash organisms, that is not going to be helpful to you when you're doing your quiz. So what you need to do is when I'm talking about this slide, you need to make notes on what I'm actually saying. So when I tell you about the kingdom Archaea, you need to write down Kingdom Archaea and then write something down about it. Because if you don't do that, then it won't be helpful for you. So you're just making a list of things that are in a PowerPoint and that is not a good way to take notes. I don't know why some teachers let you do that. Just copy the slides because it, it isn't helpful. Um, I also don't put very many words on the slides because I want you to write stuff down from listening. There's a lot of evidence from studies about learning that if you write down what you're hearing, then it's more effective for learning and remembering than if you just copy something down. And that makes sense if you think about it. Like, I don't speak Chinese, but I can copy down Chinese symbols. I could probably write, I mean, I could copy like a whole paragraph of Chinese symbols, right? But that doesn't mean I know what it means. So we have to make sure we're writing down things that we're listening to, that we're hearing, and that we're um, needing to remember in the future. So this is about cell division and reproduction because that's what we're talking about in this um, unit of class when we're going to be talking about something like genetic engineering, what are the right and the wrong things for genetic engineering, how far should we go. Cell division and reproduction are a big part of that because this is naturally how organisms uh, pass on their genes, pass on heredity. And if we're going to be genetic engineering, organisms, then we're going to be interrupting this natural process. So we need to understand it. Okay, so living things. In biology, we have a lot of fancy vocabulary words. An organism means a living thing. So that's the definition of organism is a living thing. And for the most part, we think of living things being like plants and animals because that's what we interact with all the time. Bacteria and archaea and a lot of the things that are in the kingdom protists, they're too small for us to even see with our naked eye. So unless we have a microscope around, which, I mean, I'm a biology teacher, I'm a science nerd, but I don't have a a microscope at home. I should get one. I need to put that on my Christmas list. That would be fun. But we don't have a microscope at home, so we don't look at these things. We don't interact with them every day. Well, at least we don't think we do. Bacteria, you interact with them every day. In fact, your body has more bacteria in it than you have cells that are your own genetic makeup. So you contain a lot of bacteria and you have a lot of bacteria all over your skin and a lot of them are actually helpful to us so we need them you couldn't digest your food without the bacteria that are living in your guts you would not be able to um, get nutrients from your food if you didn't have bacteria living in like your your large and small intestines so we we need those things but we just don't think about them because they're not visual to us so i wanted to put this slide up here to kind of show you guys that there's a bunch of other living things that we don't think about one thing I would like you to write down really quick is that there are way more unicellular organisms than there are multicellular organisms. So multicellular organisms are things that are made of more than one cell. Unicellular, like unicycle, means one. So they only have one cell. And in this kingdom right here of life, it's called archaea. These things are all single-celled organisms. They do not have multiple cells. Same thing with bacteria. 
Um, the difference between archaea and bacteria is not big enough for us to get the difference between them in a high school class, but if you study biology in the future, you want to become a doctor or a nurse, you will learn more about those. The kingdom protista is kind of a category where if something is not a bacteria, it's not a plant, it's not a fungus, it's not an archaea, we put it in this like catch-all group. Most of the things in protista are unicellular. This is a paramecium that it's showing. Hold on, my mouse went away. This is a paramecium right here. Um, and then there's also some things that are multicellular, like kelp in the ocean. It says algae right here. I wish it said kelp instead because there's three types of algae, which is confusing. Some algae is plants. Some algae is bacteria. So I wish they would say kelp right here. But if you've ever seen like otters swimming around in these big underwater forests, that's kelp. Um, but most of it is unicellular. Then we get to these kingdoms right here and we have um, fungi, plantae, and animalia. And those are funguses, plants, and animals. And these are mostly going to, well, kingdom fungi has a lot of unicellular things and, and plantae does as well. But animal kingdom organisms always have more than one cell. So you can write down a couple of pieces of information about that, that the animal kingdom is what we are part of. Um, and then there's also these things that are only one cell at a time. So they just live their whole life as one cell. Okay, there's two groups of cells, and you definitely should write down some things about them. So make yourself a little a little bullet point that says prokaryote and a, a bullet point that says eukaryote, and then we're going to kind of compare and contrast these. So this is a model of each of them, and a model just means that we're simplifying things, we're breaking it down into like simple ways to understand. So if we were going to look at a cell in real life, um, it wouldn't be this simple. Prokaryotic cells do kind of look exactly like this example of a prokaryotic cell, but eukaryotic cells look so different. Like there's your brain cells, which look totally different from, um, you know, the cells in your skin. But they all have some component parts. They have some things that we can find throughout them. The big thing to remember about prokaryotic cells is that they have no nucleus. So pro and no rhyme. Their DNA is not in their nucleus. Prokaryotes include archaea and bacteria. You should write that down. So those unicellular organisms, they don't have a nucleus to keep their DNA in. Their DNA is in a thing called a nucleoid, and sometimes they have also these plasmids, which are little pieces of DNA, like little rings. And this is kind of like a string that is like all wadded up. So it's like it's like a round, long piece of yarn and it's just all twisted. So these have DNA, of course, because they're living things, but they don't keep their DNA in a nucleus. And that means that they're going to be dividing and reproducing way different than the kind of cells that are in our body. Eukaryotic cells are the ones that are in protista, in plantae, animalia, and fungi. So this is the type of cell that's in your body. And if you have a cat, it's the kind of cell that's in your cat's body. And if you go outside and you look at all the trees, then, I mean trees in New Mexico, come on. Well, I guess if you live in the city. If you live out, then if you look at all the ocotillos, then you can see eukaryotic cells. And they have a nucleus. That's the big thing. That's what eukaryotic has. So it rhymes with new, see you and new. And so it has a nucleus. So prokaryotes have no nucleus and eukaryotes have a nucleus. That's how I remember it. I know that's silly, but I'm silly. <laughs> okay, these are going to do different things. So there's two types of cell division and we're gonna, we're, okay, well, there's three types of cell division, but we're gonna talk about them on separate slides. Right now, I you don't need to write them down, but I'm just giving you an introduction. The three types of cell division, so the ways to split parent cells into daughter cells, and let's write that down as the definition of cell division, splitting parent cells into daughter cells. Cell division can, you can also think of it as one cell dividing into two or more daughter cells. Okay, so that's a good definition to write down. There's three ways to do it. On this side of the line that's right here, binary fission, this is going to be the way that prokaryotes do it. 
And eukaryotes are going to actually have two ways to do it, depending on how they reproduce. So here we have gametes, which are sex cells. And if you look at this one, it's, I mean, it's not a good looking sperm. This, this would be a messed up sperm if it really looked like this. But we have a sperm and an egg here. And that's going to be the kind of cell division that we have to do to create a new baby or a new kitten. So let's look at each of these really carefully. So remember, cell division is splitting of a, of a parent cell into two or more daughter cells. And there's three ways to do that. Okay, reproduction is a little bit different. Reproduction's definition, which you should write down, is the, um, the formation of a new individual. So individual organisms are like one bacteria one cat but if you are making babies then you are reproducing right if you're a bacteria you don't reproduce like you don't have to find a man that's willing to you know get it on with you deposit sperm you don't have to grow to adulthood like there's a lot less complicated stuff in asexual reproduction because asexual reproduction it's kind of cool in some ways you just clone yourself like you literally just clone yourself you can't do it though because you are a sexually reproducing organism so reproduction is making a new individual and there's going to be two ways to do that so let's get the details of binary fission down um, I would like you to write down binary fission as a title, and then I would write, I would like you to write down in a sentence, binary fission is both reproduction and cell division. Binary fission is both reproduction and cell division. Now, this is really annoying because it looks like it has a nucleus, and I just realized that I put this picture on here and it looks like it has a nucleus, but remember, binary fission happens in prokaryotes. That's probably something you want to write down. Binary fission happens in prokaryotes. So they don't have a nucleus. And what happens is that you have the parent cell and it gets to be like a certain age, like it's it's an adult cell. It meets the end of its growing cycle. And so it says, you know what? I need to copy my DNA and I need to split in half. The DNA will get copied and it usually copies perfectly correctly. So there's a lot of things in the body that make... Um, DNA copy like perfectly because that's essential for life and um, so it'll just split into two and the two new daughter cells are going to be clones of the parents they're going to be identical they'll be exactly like the parent cell so now instead of just having Joe cell we have Joe cell and also Joe cell they're basically the same so the only differences that are going to happen here is if there's a genetic mutation or something goes wrong in the copying of the DNA. So parent cells of bacteria are exactly like their daughter cells, except if there's a mutation. So you should definitely write that down. All right, so now let's look at another type of cell division. This one is more complicated because we do have a nucleus here. And so we've got to do a lot more steps to make this happen. Mitosis is always cell division, but sometimes it's also reproduction. So mitosis is always cell division, but sometimes it's also reproduction. In the human body, it's never reproduction. Mitosis is just going to replace cells that you already have or make you bigger. So like if I eat too much ice cream over the COVID lockdown, my body's going to be mitosis a whole bunch of fat cells for me that I get to keep around until I decide to stop eating too much ice cream and start working out again so that I can fit in my work clothes. But why should I do that? Because right now we don't even have to go back to work. So I just keep, I just keep eating the ice cream. Anyways, mitosis is giving me those increasing amounts of fat cells. But remember how we had that kingdom protista? In protista, sometimes they reproduce um, by just making a copy of themselves. There's an organism called an amoeba, like the amoeba sisters. And when an amoeba um, needs to reproduce, it just makes an exact copy of itself. So in that way, it's like binary fission. In this case, we have, um, in the human body, we're just going to be making cells that are in our body. So like your skin cells, your liver cells. If we're talking about sperm and eggs, that's going to be a different story. That's a different type of cell division. So here's some information, and you can pause this and read this. Basically, I'm just going to point out the most important things to you. 
So in your cells, all the cells of your body, you have some genetic information from your mom and some from your dad. You have chromosomes from them. Humans have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes, but they always show them in these models with only like two or just way less because it's hard to draw like 23 pairs of chromosomes and make a picture that you can actually see what's going on in it. So that's why, that's why we simplify it like this. But what happens is that your cells have a nucleus and during the regular cell life, so when the cells are just doing their thing, they copy their DNA. So they'll make a copy of it. Then that's called replication. And that's a really important term for you to remember. So I would write down DNA replication is making two copies of the DNA. You have the original and then you have the second copy. Okay, then there's going to be some steps, and there's a video later that'll tell you about the steps, but the main point is that after all of these steps happen, you get two daughter cells from mitosis, so just like binary fission, we have two daughter cells, but not like binary fission, we're going to be forming nuclei that have the DNA in it. Again, just like binary fission, these daughter cells are going to be clones of the parent cell. And that's actually pretty good because if you had all different types of um, cell diversity on your face, you might look pretty weird if all of your cells were copying differently on your face or like any part of your skin. So this is really great for body cells. It's not good for genetic diversity, but that's okay because you don't need genetic diversity on your face. These daughter cells again, are exactly like the parent cell, unless one of those mistakes happens when they're copying the DNA, and those mistakes are called mutations. Next slide, here we go. So this is the last type of cell division that we're going to talk about. It's called meiosis, and meiosis is a type of cell division, but it is never a type of reproduction. There's two types of reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction can be done through mitosis and binary fission, but meiosis is a type of cell division that makes sperm and egg cells so that you can reproduce later on. But by itself, it just makes sperm and eggs. And sperm and eggs, by the way, are called um, gametes in science. That's the word for sex cells. So with meiosis, what happens is, and this is really important and it's very different than in mitosis. Okay, you may have brothers and sisters and a lot of cousins and you look like some of them and you kind of don't look like some of them. And then remember how I asked you in the first lesson of this unit, do you look more like your mom or your dad? This is how that occurs. This is how we have, like I have um, four or I have um, three brothers and we don't look very much alike. Okay, so there's not very much um, the same between us because number one, we don't have the same parents. But if you have a, a group of kids, like my grandparents had 11 children, and it doesn't matter which one of them you look at, they all look like Larkins. You can tell that they're all related because they all have similar characteristics, but they have differences too. Meiosis is going to be responsible for making all those differences. So genetic diversity is really important in meiosis, and I would write that down if I was you. So here's why that occurs. So remember in mitosis, we had the DNA copies itself. That also happens in meiosis, but something else happens too. You have your copies of DNA from your mom and your copies of DNA from your dad. What's going to happen is they're going to get together. And this is like a weird chemical process that you should not try to understand until you get to college because like it's really, really complicated. They basically like rub against each other and, you know, like kind of get it on and they share parts of each other with each other. So like some sections of one chromosome will switch out with another section. And what that does is it makes every single chromosome different. So now instead of just having identical copies from mom and dad, you have a mixture of mom and dad and you have several different mixtures of them. So then what happens is these other steps where they get pulled apart and you get two cells and both of these cells, they have enough genetic information to make a whole person. But we have to have two people to make a whole person. So if we have all the genetic information in one of these, um, then that would, not, that would not work for sexual reproduction because you have to get a sperm and an egg together. So we have to divide this DNA again. We're going to make it something called haploid. 
So these are going to be diploid cells. They have all the DNA from mom and all the DNA from dad. Haploid cells are basically going to only have half, and that's how I remember it because it's haploid and half. They're only going to have half of the DNA needed to make a person. So instead of having 46 chromosomes in the daughter cells, they're going to have only 23. And this is important because every single one of these will end up being different because you're only getting half of the information and we mixed up these chromosomes over here in the first stages. So then once you have half of the DNA that you need to make a person in a sperm and half of the DNA that you need it to make a person in an egg and then you put those together, that's when you get a complete um, sexually reproduced offspring. So this right here, this part is not reproduction. This is a type of cell division that gets organisms that sexually reproduce ready to sexually reproduce. So these are going to go on and if you're a male, these will turn into sperm. And if you're a female, the, you only actually save one of these and the rest of them get absorbed back into the body. So that increases the chances even more of having genetic diversity because you are only going to have one of these that gets saved to be turned into an egg. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is... Um, a lot more complicated than asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, like if I could asexually reproduce, which would be kind of cool because then I could have one me to do the job and one me to be like the house mom who makes the food and stuff, I'd love that. I can't clone myself, right? Bacteria can clone themselves. Amoebas can clone themselves. Um, there's some... Um, there's some cells in... or all prokaryotes. All prokaryotes do um, the cloning of themselves, remember, except for mutations. But here's what happens in humans, okay? You have multicellular diploid adults. So what that means is that we're in the animal kingdom, we're made of more than one cell, and in each of our cells, we have 46 chromosomes. The eggs are made in the ovaries and the sperm are made in the testes. So those are special organs that make your gametes. You have cells that reproduce on your face, they just go and do mitosis right on your face. But for meiosis, you have special organs to do this because it's kind of a big deal. And then the ovaries are going to make eggs. Remember the eggs and the sperm, since they've gone through meiosis, they each only have half of the DNA. And that's actually really good because then once you get that sperm into the egg, you have what's called fertilization. And then we call when a sperm and egg first get together, we call that a diploid zygote. So now it has all the DNA needed to make a person and we have that sperm and that egg meet. After those sperm and egg meet, they're just going to do mitosis for the rest of their life. So then we're going to have this one cell divide into two cells. And then each of those two cells are going to divide into two more cells. And then we have four cells. And then that happens for nine months until you push out a baby or sometimes get cesarean sectioned out of your mom. And then you grow up and then you make these, of course, sex cells. And then this process just goes on and on. So reproduction is making a new organism. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. I'm sorry, this is the longest note video I've ever made, but I hope you wrote down a lot of stuff because this is like vocabulary central in this lesson right now. Okay, have a good day.